Russia is trying to involve Belarus in the Ukrainian war with using Shahed drones. Recently, Russian Shahed-136 kamikaze drones, manufactured in Iran, have been entering Belarusian airspace. At first glance, this might not seem surprising. Alexander Kovalenko, Ukrainian military expert and observer of the Information Resistance Group, has analyzed the recent activity of Russian Shahed-136 drones in Belarusian airspace. According to him, the presence of Russian Shahed-136 drones in Belarusian airspace is not surprising, as Russia has been actively using Belarusian airspace for strikes on Ukrainian territory since the beginning of the full-scale invasion in 2022. However, starting from the second half of 2022, the frequency of these airspace activities in Belarus decreased significantly and was reduced to a minimum throughout 2023 and 2024. On the other hand, Russia's use of Belarusian airspace for planning and conducting raids on Ukrainian territory appears quite rational. Firstly, it allows shortening routes in several directions. Secondly, it provides a safer passage through Belarus, minimizing the risks of being targeted and destroyed by Ukrainian air defenses. Why Belarusian airspace wasn't utilized for this purpose earlier remains a question, a military expert said. He noted that we cannot unequivocally state that Russia has resumed using Belarusian airspace. As reported by Alexander Kovalenko, the first Shahed-136 entered Belarusian airspace on July the 11th near Loyev, bordering the Chernihiv region of Ukraine. Initially, it appeared the kamikaze drone was attempting to use Belarusian airspace as a shortcut. However, an Mi-24 helicopter and an Su-30 SM fighter jet were deployed to intercept the drone. On July the 13th, the incident repeated itself. The Shahed-136 entered Belarusian airspace near Loyev in the Gomel region and headed toward Vitebsk. That night, Belarusian Mi-24 helicopters and Su-30 fighter jets were also put on alert. On July the 16th, a Shahed-136 entered Belarusian airspace near the village of Belaya Soroka and exited near Komarin. However, just four hours later, another Shahed-136 entered Belarus near Narolia and headed towards Vitebsk. Belarusian Mi-24 helicopters and Su-30 fighter jets were deployed to intercept the drone. The kamikaze drone crashed and detonated near the village of Lyoban. Ukrainian military expert mentions that these incidents are indeed quite unusual. On one hand, in two instances, it's clear that the Shahed-136 used Belarusian airspace to shorten its flight path securely. However, in the other two cases, the kamikaze drones were clearly not heading toward Ukraine at all. Despite this, Belarusian aviation was on high alert in all cases, suggesting no prior warning from the Russian side about the Shahed 136's flight, he stated. The repeated course of two kamikaze drones towards Vitebsk could be attributed to technical or programming malfunctions in the Shahed 136. However, it occurred twice in such a short period, suggesting a critical flaw in the drone's internal software. Or, I dare to assume, considering the reaction of the Belarusian Air Force, that the Shahed 136 drones were unexpected guests in Belarusian airspace. Therefore, not only aviation but also other systems, such as electronic warfare, might have been activated against them. It is quite possible that inexperienced Belarusian electronic warfare operators inadvertently disrupted the Shahed 136's intended course, causing a program malfunction that redirected them northwards towards Vitebsk. There could be several interpretations of what happened, but one thing is clear. While the initial incursions of Shahed 136 into the Belarusian airspace may have been planned, their subsequent actions were clearly unforeseen. Surely, Russia did not intend to provoke Lukashenko by sending kamikaze drones towards Vitebsk, or did it? Alexander Kovalenko concluded. Russian forces suffer heavy losses in Donetsk. Personnel are being thrown into meat assaults. An agent of the Atesh guerrilla movement reports that in the Turetsk sector, Donetsk region, Russians are suffering huge losses of equipment and personnel. The Atesh guerrilla movement reports. An Atesh agent, a serviceman of one of the units of the 27th Motorized Infantry Division, reported the increased deployment of personnel and equipment to the Turetsk sector of the Donetsk region, the statement says. 
The guerrillas say that the Russian command is setting a task to capture Turetsk at any cost. Personnel are being thrown into meat assaults, the wounded are killed and are being replaced by seconded soldiers. The Russian command sets the task to take Turetsk at any cost, sparing no expense to equipment and personnel. Atesh writes, Nazar Voloshin, spokesman for the Kortitsia Separate Military Unit, said that the enemy conducts most of the assaults in the Toretsk sector in small groups using little armored vehicles. Recently, the enemy has reduced the emphasis of assault operations on Chassiv Yar. It has moved more to the Toretsk direction. Most of the attacks were conducted in the Toretsk sector, said Voloshin. According to him, most of the attacks are conducted by small groups. Armored vehicles are used sparingly. Voloshin noted that the brigades operating on the contact line lack soldiers, so they are actively recruiting. There are also Z-Storm and V-Storm units, which are used as assault units and often to identify positions or clear the territory, Voloshin said. He added that Russian forces conduct many so-called meat assaults by mobile fire groups. Along with these assaults, the Russians shelled the town of Turetsk with various types of weapons. Voloshin told that the defense forces continue to firmly hold their positions, wear down Russian forces and inflict significant losses in manpower, weapons and military equipment on Russian troops.